And this good news of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The fact is, his only true name, Yahweh, was obscured for centuries, while the incorrect substitute, Jehovah, was mistakenly put in its place. We find here that it was Paul's manner to worship on the seventh day, Sabbath. There is only one way to be just in Scripture, and it happens through obedience to the Father, and that means His commands and His laws. If there is any one truth that we must understand about the Messiah, it is His heritage. Yahweh saw something in you that He can use. And so he called you as a candidate for everlasting life. He told him that his son's name would be called Yahshua because he would save his people from their sins. When you understand that the New Testament is an extension of the Old Testament, Most everyone knows that Moses was a great lawgiver, or more correctly, the law's messenger. After all, it wasn't his law he brought down from Mount Sinai, but the Father Yahweh's law. But did you know that Moses was also a prophet? When he commanded the Levites to place the book of the law in the side of the Ark of the Covenant, he described a time when that law, which reflects our Creator's own mind, personality, and character, he foretold of a time when the Bible's laws would come to mean almost nothing to this world and would even be despised. Today, we will discuss going from simple knowing the truth to living it and loving it. Today on Discover the Truth, we ask, are you serious? Most know that Moses received the law on Mount Sinai to give to the Israelites, but there was something else he did that relates to us today. We read about it in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of Yahweh your Elohim, that it may be there for a witness against you. Witness against you means as a standard of judgment for your life. Furthermore, Moses prophesied in Deuteronomy 31, 29, For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. With a universal disregard for the scriptures, society today is skidding towards chaos. The influence of Yahweh's word is waning in most of Europe. The death knell of the scriptural way of life is being wrung everywhere, just as other non-biblical religions are taking over. A key question our Savior asked in Luke chapter 18 and verse 8 was, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Now, why would he ask this rhetorical question? Could it be because faith in the Bible would wane in our day? That's certainly part of the fulfillment. Very few today actually read the Word, and it started when there became little need to bring the Scriptures with you to church each week because it wasn't being taught anyway. The other issue is that many who profess a belief in the Bible make little effort to follow what it teaches. Let me illustrate. Here's a brief synopsis of each of the Ten Commandments. The first commandment says, I am Yahweh. The second, there are many gods in the world. Third, the Creator has a name. Four, the seventh day is a day of the week. Fifth commandment, parents are honorable. Sixth commandment, murder exists. 7. Some commit adultery. 8. Stealing is common. 9. Lying to another is popular. And 10. Coveting is wanting what is not yours. What do you think of my modified list of the Ten Commandments? Are these the Ten Commandments you've read in the Scriptures? No? You're absolutely right. That's not how the Ten Commandments read. I purposely left out a key component in each of the commandments. I deliberately took out the command part of each commandment to make a point. You see, just reading them and knowing about them without observing them is pointless. But that's how many look at the law as well as the entire scriptures. 
Many have understanding of the word, they just don't practice it. Few obey the precepts Yahweh gave us in the scriptures. They acknowledge them, but don't go beyond that. They refuse to obey what the word commands. The Bible defines such behavior as being lukewarm, and being lukewarm has the same results as being an infidel. Yahshua the Messiah said in Revelation 3.15, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Yahweh didn't give his word just so we would have some entertaining reading during the slow times. He gave it so we would have a course to follow in our lives, a course that leads to blessing and ultimately to everlasting life. The popular teaching says you don't need to do anything, follow anything in the Word, or make any changes in your life because the Savior did it all for you. On the contrary, that is exactly Yahweh's purpose for sending His Son to earth. He not only paid the penalty for sin, but by His own life set the right pattern to follow in our lives. The Bible is the Creator's own your owner's manual. The vast majority read the Old Testament stories and the New Testament ministry of the Messiah and his apostles and stop there. It doesn't register that they must now do something with what they learn. When Yahweh says in the first commandment, I am Yahweh, he also says in that commandment not to have any other deity to replace him in life or worship. When he says in the second commandment that many gods are in the world, he also says don't make or worship any of them. In the fourth commandment, when he says that the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath, he also says to keep that day holy, not a different day. Many think that all they need to do is believe. How do you believe your way through keeping the Sabbath holy, or honoring parents, or telling the truth? You either do or you don't do what is commanded. The commandments are black and white, and either you live by them or you don't. And that goes for the rest of the Bible's instructions. When he says in Leviticus 23 to observe and keep his feasts because they belong to him, that is what he means. Just reading about his feast days does no good if they aren't observed. Humanistic thinking so dominates today that many question whether even murderers or child molesters should be punished. Well, that's man's reasoning. The Apostle Paul warned in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Messiah. He is admonishing against such things as today's all-pervasive political correctness philosophy, which has supplanted biblical standards of right and wrong in society. Moral standards of only a few decades ago have eroded almost beyond recognition. Today, sin is justified. The truth about the serious effects of sin is ignored. What happened in the 1960s rebellion against authority cracked the moral foundation on which this culture was established, and we have been drifting further away ever since. Anyone my age or older who lived before and during that time knows what I mean. Many today are unable to properly discern right from wrong. In our society, moral judgments are skewed. Their thinking has been twisted through humanistic philosophy and deceit. Well, we have more for you, and we'll be right back. Astonishing Bible Truths Your Church Never Taught. This booklet may just change your life. Operators are standing by. Call 1-573-896-1000 for your free copy of this fascinating booklet. Or write to Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043. Read a request online, yrm.org. 
If the lines are busy, please try again in 10 to 15 minutes. Reading the prophet Jeremiah is like reading today's front pages of the newspaper. He is amazingly accurate about our day. He says in Jeremiah 6, 15 to 19, condemning modern philosophy, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set a watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Fast disappearing are the days when those who claim to be religious think and act differently and live differently from the rest of society. The world's ways are so woven into the fabric of behavior that hearts, even hearts of those who claim to walk in the truth, are often polluted beyond their own recognition, if not beyond redemption. And like Lot, who had a hard time leaving his sinful hometown of Sodom, they don't even realize how conditioned by the sinful culture they truly are. Too many give lip service to the word, while their true heart's desire is to get maximum personal enjoyment with minimal effort. Should the Bible believer expect great riches for following Yahweh's word? Does either the Father in heaven or his Son say you are guaranteed such blessings if you confess me? Well, the Bible I read says the believer is given his needs, not necessarily his wants. Our Savior Yahshua and his disciples lived Spartan lives. He promised that those who followed him would also experience trials and even persecution, not the life of wealth and fleshly indulgence that many promise today. If your faith is only a hobby or a just-in-case conviction, and if you think an occasional effort is acceptable, it is time to rethink your walk. You can't fool Almighty Yahweh. He can see hypocrisy a light year away, and he knows all about half-hearted efforts and the power of carnal pulls. He knows our hearts better than we do. It's time to get serious. It's time to discover what the scriptures really teach about the true walk of faith. To be chosen for the first resurrection, to be among those who the Bible calls first fruits, when the Messiah Yahshua returns and gathers his elect, has tough eligibility standards. Yahweh is looking for the cream, the best of the best. He won't settle for a half-hearted commitment, an occasional try, a once-in-a-while effort, living both ways with an occasional confession to assuage the conscience simply won't cut it. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Colossians in chapter 1, verse 10, that you might walk worthy of the master unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim. Yahweh is working with those who show love for him, those who put him first and foremost in their lives. They will serve under his son in his kingdom. They will have undergone the fires of refinement now. They will have been through the mill, experiencing and overcoming many trials that tested their faith. That is why he allows trials. Difficulties are the refining fires that test commitment and resolve. You could call this life spiritual boot camp, a preparation for a glorious position of rulership in the kingdom for those who overcome and prove worthy. Tribulation brings out the true person. A news report after 9-11 revealed that half of those polled said they were more interested in religion after September 11 than they were before the attacks on the World Trade Center. 
It was interesting to note that many Americans showed little interest in the more trivial matters of life in the weeks following the attacks. Hollywood nearly ground to a halt. Sporting events were canceled. No one felt much like being entertained. It was all too serious a time. As terrible as it was, September 11 was just a taste of difficulties to come according to your Bible. It's time to wake up as a nation and come to grips with our own fragile existence and learn what is in store for our future. The Savior, who was the most important prophet of all, said in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, his Olivet Prophecies, to prepare for wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. Now, he didn't say this just because of the natural ebb and flow of such disasters but because of an abnormal increase in the numbers and severity of these natural catastrophes. The biggest mistake today's, in today's Bible believer's mind is, is not realizing that a commitment to the one they worship requires complete involvement, day in and day out, not just a visit to a church for an hour once a week. A person's faith must be lived, not just alleged. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, Almighty Yahweh used the tool of calamity whenever his people drifted away from him. He used the discipline of punishment to bring people through their repentance back to worshiping him in obedience. Well, there's coming a day in the not too distant future when this planet will reel on its axis because of the sins of man. We read about it through the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children, they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. Very humbling and very uh, mind-grabbing to read such a thing. Most of this earth will resemble a war zone. In fact, it will be a war zone. The prophet John provides vivid details about the devastation awaiting this planet. And we'll take a look at that in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, when we come back in just a moment. Astonishing Bible Truths Your Church Never Taught. This booklet may just change your life. Operators are standing by. Call 1-573-896-1000 for your free copy of this fascinating booklet. Or write to Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043. Read a request online, yrm.org. If the lines are busy, please try again in 10 to 15 minutes.
What is prophesied to occur on our planet in the end days is going to shock even the high and the mighty. John in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 begins, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Did John really mean that our Savior will return in wrath? Yes, that's what it says. He himself inspired these words written by John in the book of Revelation. He's going to put up with this world's present rebellion only so long, and then he will return in fury to destroy his enemies and gather his elect in the resurrection. Following the September 11 tragedy, newspaper and magazine articles were asking, why were the 3,000 people who perished not divinely spared when the Twin Towers fell? But that question was a bit late in coming. Where was Yahweh when the Tower of Siloam fell and killed many people back then, a couple thousand years ago? Read what Yahshua said about that tower calamity in Luke chapter 13 and verse 4. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think you that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You see, there is suffering on earth because we live in an environment of unrepented sin. It was not meant to be this way. Man was not supposed to rebel. He was supposed to obey his creator and live a life of peace and happiness. But mankind chose a different route. Man decided to do it his own way. And for 6,000 years, this world has witnessed the result of that rebellion through sin and wickedness. Untold suffering and anguish resulted from man saying, no, I will not go that way. And so Yahweh takes his protecting hand off. He lets man do it his way. And man's way inevitably ends in heartache and misery. He says, obey me and be blessed. Yet many would rather disobey and then blame him for the consequences of their own rebellion. The question now is, where is the man and woman who will turn to him in repentance and follow his ways? Yahweh's hand of protection is being lifted from this planet and he will allow the consequences of men's evils that they so much enjoy to consume them. Where did Yahweh go when the bad happens? It's a question that assumes he approves of man's sinful lifestyles and will always protect us from our deliberate disobedience. You see, Yahweh will allow us to harm ourselves until one day we learn to bow our knees before him and hunger to know his will in our lives. Only then will things change and get better. But until such a time, we will continue to see our world worsen and many suffer as they experience the wages of sin. Yahweh has established his standards and he won't lower the bar for anyone. Proper, acceptable behavior is established by his laws, his commands and his judgments. Everyone is judged by them, whether they acknowledge that or not. Notice Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12 at the end of the scriptures. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Books is the Greek biblos, from which the word Bible is translated. Judgment will be based on the scriptures and the commands given therein. On what criteria will we be judged then? Notice that the passage says, judged according to works. You see, what we do in this life is what his judgment will be based on. 
Now, any judge judges the guilt or innocence of a person on whether they committed the crime or not, or whether they were innocent of it. Their judgment is based on past behavior of the accused. It is the same with the Father in heaven. Revelation 22.12 says, Yahshua, the Messiah, will give rewards to every man according as his work shall be. He tells us not just once, but repeatedly throughout the scriptures to keep his commandments, honor his word, obey his voice. Just because we don't go immediately uh, to punishment for it, for our disobedience, doesn't mean it'll never happen, nor does it diminish the importance of obedience. Yahweh hates a lukewarm or Laodicean attitude. Your heart is either in it or it is not. Back to Revelation again, chapter 3, verse 17, is a warning to the lukewarm believer. Because you say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you mayest be rich and white raiment, that you mayest be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. See, there are blessings for obedience, blessings eternally for obedience now in this life. To have true wealth and experience real riches of spiritual gold is to be refined by fiery trials and to overcome them. Each person is responsible for his or her own life and each one will be accountable for his or her life at judgment. Passing the blame for a poorly lived life onto someone else won't cut it. Eve thought she could hide behind an excuse when she pointed to Hasatan as being responsible for her sin. Yes, but he caused me to do it, she said. Oh, I see, he stuck that fruit in your mouth when you weren't looking. Well, friends, the time is now to make the changes in your life that are necessary to be found a true child of Yahweh. We invite you to take advantage of today's free offer by calling 1-573-896-1000 or write to Discover the Truth, P.O. Box 463, Holt Summit, Missouri 65043. Visit our website at yrm.org. There you can read and request dozens of booklets, watch hundreds of sermons, or tune in live every Sabbath, all at no cost to you. Discover the Truth is funded by our faithful partners and supporters. To donate online, visit donate.yrm.org. Set your DVRs, tell your family and friends, and join us right here next week.